Hey everybody, welcome on back, and yes, can I get a drum roll please? My parcel arrived a whole week and two days early, and it contains flex track. I have brass flex track, but after seeing what you can do with flex track, I was going to say no to nickel silver flex track with a $20 shipping because this stuff is going to make the south side of the layout look a little more less snap tracky and more creative would be the word I'm looking for but without further ado let me explain what all I got so far and well I got a bunch of stuff in store in this video just a quick overview I have the one of three pieces I need for the west side of the tunnel portal um, I got the rest of the radius I need to finish up the east side I got another track powered um, yeah track power connector here for the main line I'm gonna run I need to get two more of these because I want to have two down here for the primary bus on the south or south side and the other two will be on the north side and I got to thinking what if I hop off of these onto the tracks as well because any tracks I'm not gonna have any off switches on I can feed them off of these I believe but the other sightings, they will be. Oh, hey, Rudy. Come in to say hi. Yeah. I'm going to let her in in a minute. But yeah, the plan is to unpack this, see if this will um, feed a loop around, and I'll wrap up some of my inner line to make it happen if I have to. Because I want to run train the loop, get things running, warmed up. And, uh, yeah, have some fun. Well, at the same time, trying to figure out if I can reconfigure the other side of my layout, which I will show here in just a moment. So I've gone ahead and placed down a piece of flex track, as you can see here, into my um, northwest curve. I've extended the curve out a little bit, and I've got that back piece of one-inch foam nestled down. For some reason, I thought this whole time it was two inches foam, and I'm like, I'm going to ding back. It's actually one, like the rest of the foam board that's on the table. Now, I want to see if my GG1 is going to clip this because I did before, before I had this backdrop and was experimenting on the whole um, modular train table kind of setup. So anyway, without further ado, if this clears up, my big boy and Y6B should clear it too. So let's just find out. Turn on the headlights. I think about the right way. Forwards, we're gonna go backwards. I still gotta open up and see what I've broken it though. We're doing a it's quiet backwards, but it's gonna click going forwards. Clearing. Yeah, I shouldn't have done a, a torque test with it. <laughs> I think I won the gears kind of out of place, but run smooth, roll smooth. Let's see, is this going to clear or rub on the foam? I couldn't tell from down at the controller end. No, oh, good, we're in the clear. Perfect. I now have a temporary loop at long last, so yay! Uh, where to begin now? Um, first things first. Let's take a locomotive on the track, see how the track power holds up and things work. Because I'm not sure if I may hit a spot or a bump or something. So, we plug it in and we'll take my P4 Pennsylvania K4 shrouded around the track. Just going to give the uh, stay alive moment to charge batteries. 
and light. Oh, hang on, select local. I believe this one's default to three. One thing I would love to do is to figure out how to adjust volumes on these things because this one's too loud. My two from Broadway Limited are way too loud. Just to stay with the audio for a moment. Let's use speed step eight. Blended. So let's follow along my GG1 here. It's on speed step four. I'm going to see if I can't place this down and it'll stay level ish. Got to turn the headlight on. Come around the second bend. Good. Coming down to the other 24 inch bend that's right near the wall, I wonder how this is going to look. Is it clear or is it going to rub? It just barely clears. Let's see if I can just scooch that up a little bit. So with a temporary loop working, where am I going to go from here? Well, at some point, this track over here is going to be lifted up and adjusted. As I'm going to take a trip you see on camera, this corner which here I had planned for a turntable for the larger locomotives and make a duplicate corner over here. So it uh, gives me a little more room to um, take this, put some curves in, because this will be extended out. And I had to curve these two sides in as well to um, store my longer length of cars because I need to have 10 50 foot box cars in there with a caboose on it to comfy able to adjust and switch out as needed. So that's going to be fun <laughs> readjusting something I didn't want to readjust, but it's, it's progress, right? So in the meantime, I prepared a little special something I'm going to. Well, we only, we only got the one main line running, so we use the one main line and a we'll little shut job going on.
So I hope everybody enjoyed that time lapse. I do apologize if I might have actually moved anybody on camera. That was not my intention. But um, as I got things rolling, I forgot the camera was rolling and I just got lost um, running my shunt yard. And I thought to myself at the same time, especially this being two days later, uh, filming this bit, um, I realized not only did I make a bit of a puzzle for myself without even thinking about that, but at the same time, just this little zigzag from here to there, there, and back there, on its own, you can easily run two operators operating the shunter in conjunction. And not to mention a third person running the uh, signal controls for the switches. Signal? Would it be signal house? No. Anyway, the, 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 the tower you go into to throw all your switches, right? I forget the name of that building. But yeah, that alone is like three people, right? Excuse me. Whew. But that's like three people right there. You can make a lot of stuff happen with three people. And then you have one or two guys around the primary locomotives around the track, a couple of laps, come back in and do whatever you need to do, right? To simulate something. Now, pressing forward here, so my plan is going to keep at um, getting to here, get the switches in, uh, track in, and then finish the inside main line down there and over there. And then at the back corner, I'm going to finish adjusting that hole and um, getting track set up into there and finish up the elevator as well for the new height. Because even though I won't have the elevator running within the next few months, at least it could act as another parking yard or staging yard for whatever. You know, it's going to be double laned, sorry, double tracked, and it should fit. Four 50-foot boxcars, no problem, or maybe five. I forgot to measure it. But anywho, we'll see you next time, and hopefully some more trains running. Take care, guys, and have a good night, or evening, or whatever time of day it is for you.